In chapter 14 of The Mandalorian, as Grogu sits on the stone at the top of the mountain of Tython, a blue butterfly circles his head for a moment before continuing on its way. And this is something that most people probably didn't think twice about if they even noticed it at all. But in this video, I'm going to explain why such a tiny addition could have very big implications for the child and for another fan favorite character who to this point has had absolutely nothing to do with the show. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you may be. Now in today's video, we are going to be discussing the significance of the blue butterfly in the Mandalorian and why this creature's appearance may allude to a potential Ben Solo tie-in in the future. In fact, it may even be possible that Grogu reached out to a young Ben Solo during his meditation on the Seeing Stone. Yep, I know this sounds crazy and yes, I know the sequel haters will not be happy, at least not at first, but hear me out. A few months ago, the official Star Wars YouTube channel released a short rollout which followed a toddler Ben Solo as he fumbled around with Chewbacca and his father Han Solo and Ben ends up getting himself into some trouble, but by the end of the rollout, young Solo develops an affection for this group of crystal blue butterflies who appear to show some appreciation for Ben saving them. Now, this clip is sort of up for one's own interpretation, and this might seem like a bit of a stretch to some people, but what a lot of fans have drawn from it is that the blue butterfly sort of functions as Ben Solo's spirit animal, so to speak. So what does this have to do with Ben's future, and how does this connect him to Grogu? Well, in storytelling, butterflies are traditionally an extremely prominent symbol for life, love, hope, and wait for it, rebirth. So needless to say, this is a pretty big deal for Ben Solo resurrectionists who want to see him back in the flesh someday. And if the butterfly doesn't quite do it for you, there is actually more evidence within this same episode of The Mandalorian that hints at Ben Solo's presence potentially looming over this story. It has been pointed out by many fans to this point that an adaptation of Kylo Ren's theme can be heard playing over the scene where the child is beating up those stormtroopers in the final scene of this episode. Let's have a listen. Now you guys can rewind that and play it as many times as you want, but pretty crazy, right? I mean, the sounds are almost identical, and yeah, you could say, hey, they're just playing a dark theme over two characters who are having these dark moments, but trust me, they know exactly what they're doing. Music is everything in Star Wars. Again, this is not hard proof that Ben Solo is for sure going to appear or anything like that, but it begs the question, what's with these Ben Solo nods? I mean, Star Wars is famous for their subtle tie-ins from one project to the next, so to tie Ben Solo to this creature and then have it show up a few months later in a show that is taking place during Ben's childhood has got to raise some eyebrows. Now, at the time this show is taking place, Ben Solo is about five years old. This is what we would assume to be roughly two to three years after the Star Wars rollout on the YouTube channel, and about five years before he is sent away to train with Luke. The child, on the other hand, is about 50 years old, but if we consider the way his species ages, he and Ben would be right around the same level of maturity. Ben may actually be a little further along at five years old. But it would make sense to me for the child in this moment to reach out and find this potentially very powerful Force-sensitive being who is around the same level of maturity as him and in a similar situation of, you know, they're both very powerful and they don't have a lot of guidance on how to handle this power. Ben Solo is not being trained by Luke yet. His parents are often away. He doesn't have any guidance from Leia on how to use the Force. And the child obviously was trained in his early years, but he has no teacher right now. So they're both sort of in this gray area where they don't really know what the future holds. And they've got these poles to both the light and the dark sides of the Force. And they have to figure out how to handle that. So it makes sense that the child would reach out to someone in a similar situation to his. I just think it makes a lot of sense. And it would not make sense to me for Disney to include this creature who they know fans are linking to Ben Solo if they don't intend to pursue that at some point down the road. Let's also point out that Star Wars has connected Force users to mystical animals before, as Kanan Jarrus was represented by a loath wolf named Doom in Star Wars Rebels, and Ahsoka Tano is often followed around by the convoy known as Mirai, who we actually see watching over her in Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian. And Mirai is also the one who guides Ezra through the world between worlds, where he eventually alters the course of history and saves Ahsoka from death. 
So what if the mastermind who is Dave Filoni is setting up a similar situation for Rey? After all, he is the one responsible for creating these relationships between Jedi and their representative mystical creatures, and it's no secret that Star Wars fans want to see Ben Solo return. Now listen, I fully understand that this could end up not to be the case and that the possibility of Ben Solo remaining dead forever is real, but I also recognize that these parallels are pretty much impossible to deny and it's also been recognized among fans that Ben's supposed death was left ambiguous and somewhat open-ended, giving many fans hope that his return is possible or even likely. And when you hear his theme playing over scenes in this show that is clearly trying to connect the stories of all three trilogies and tie up any loose ends, it adds some real fuel to that fire. And why would Disney do that? To further upset a fan base that's already divided on their handling of Star Wars so far? No, that makes no sense. Again, it's like I always say, you guys can believe whatever you want to believe and that's totally fine, but I find it very hard to deny these callbacks and tie-ins and it is my belief that Grogu and Ben Solo are now being bound together in some capacity. Whether we'll ever get to see that on screen, who knows, but the potential is definitely there. I also think that the Kylo theme playing over that scene where Grogu is controlling these stormtroopers with the force could allude to him once again tapping into those dark side tendencies he has displayed from time to time, so watch out for that trend to continue. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but I do think we could see the child go dark at some point, I'm just saying. But that's a whole other topic for another time, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. So comment your guys' thoughts on this theory down below, let me know if there's any other theories you guys have about this show. Please drop the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and as usual, may the force be with you, always.